Sexual assaults are hands down some of the hardest cases that you have to work as a cop. Today I'm going to tell you about my first sexual assault case. Hey guys, what's going on? I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far. Today's video is actually going to be a little bit more on the serious side of things. I think people tend to have this preconceived notion that cops just kind of ride around and pull people over and drive around all night. And while that might be true on some nights, usually we are packed with calls. Cops are first responders, so we respond to anything from deaths to child abuse cases, any number of things that you can imagine. Robberies, murders, we're the first one on scene. So naturally, we would be the first people to respond to a sexual assault. My first sexual assault case was many, many years ago, almost right after I got off of FTO. It was one of the first major cases that I had as a police officer. The night initially started calm. I was just responding and taking calls like I would any other night. Normally it was like damage to property or suspicious people or vehicles. Those are usually the types of calls that you get on night shift. Then the next thing I know, I'm flying down the highway at 90 miles an hour responding to a woman that had been thrown out of a car. As I arrived on scene, I remember a witness that was actually pulled over to the side of the road that was on the phone with dispatch at the time that I arrived. Um, I got out of my car, I talked to them, they hung up. And next to this person was a girl in the grass that was just slightly rolling back and forth and moaning, but she was not responsive to anything that I was telling her. So of course, what's the first thing I do? I call for a squad. One of the first things that the witness told me is that she actually saw this girl get thrown from the back passenger side of a silver vehicle. The only thing that she could see inside that silver vehicle was two male occupants. She didn't have names, she didn't have a tag, she didn't even have a make and model for the car. It was just a silver car with two men inside of it. And apparently this girl got thrown out from the back of this car at like 45 miles an hour. So then shortly after EMS arrives on scene, they load her up in the squad and they take her to the hospital. I got all the witness information and then I followed the squad to the ER and I was trying to talk to them to see kind of what the extent of her injuries were. Well, as it turned out, she had a broken arm and she had several very deep lacerations kind of all over her. Um, and she had a lot of road rash. She was still conscious, she was still breathing, but she was, again, she was unresponsive to anything that I was saying. It's like you were talking to her, but she wasn't, she wasn't there. So based on the way her eyes looked, and again, I wasn't very experienced at the time, so I was just kind of taking a guess, uh, but it turned out she was in fact drugged. And I know somebody in the comment section is gonna ask me what she was drugged with, and honestly, I don't know. I don't remember. But like I said, this was my first like major, major case. So some of the details are clear as day, others I just don't remember. So through the physician's examination, he was able to determine that she was in fact sexually assaulted and she was drugged. Based on that information, the case now became huge because at the time we didn't know that she had been sexually assaulted. I ended up staying with this girl for quite a while in the ER. They gave her some medicine. They kind of brought her back to, I don't remember exactly what they did, but it was at least to a point where I could get something out of her. I got her name, I got her information, and she doesn't remember really what happened, but she remembers one nickname of one of the guys that she was hanging out with that night. So based on that one nickname that she gave me, I was able to race back to the police department, and after several, several hours, of phone calls, research on the computer. I was able to get a full name of one of these guys, a make and model of the car, and I was actually able to get a tag. Well, that tag, of course, provided me with an address. Guys, I literally, I worked this case all night long. So I ended up finding what turned out to be one of the guys in the car. He was actually the driver brought him into the station, we questioned him on what happened, and he ended up giving a full confession of the night. With that confession, he also gave me a name of the accomplice that he was with. The driver himself never actually had a part in the sexual assault. He kind of got dragged into it, if you will. He was basically the driver. His friend, if you want to call him that, was in the back seat, and he is the one that actually sexually assaulted this girl. So based on the information that he gave us, we were able to type up an arrest warrant for the other guy, and we caught him. The cool thing about this case, I use the term cool loosely, of course it's a horrible case, but the cool part about it was I was able to get both of these guys in custody um, before the end of my shift. So literally all I had was a silver car with two males in it and I ended up with two arrests by the end of the night. Not bad for a sexual assault that initially has no suspects. I was actually pretty proud of the work that I put in that night and I ended up seeing this girl years and years later. It was about three years ago when I saw her. 
she was kind of going through a dark time uh, when this originally occurred and she actually turned her life around because of this incident and when I saw her she didn't remember my name but she remembered me and she ended up giving me the biggest hug and thanking me over and over and over for working her case as she put it diligently and guys sexual assault cases are some of the most intrusive and personal cases that you'll work as a cop a lot of times the victims don't want to talk out of fear or embarrassment or both sometimes you have to be careful especially as a man because a lot of women that are victims don't want to talk to a male officer they might want to talk to a female officer or they might talk to a female nurse at the ER, but they really don't feel comfortable talking to you considering what they just went through. And that can be frustrating, especially in the middle of the night, you're trying to get information, she doesn't wanna to talk to you. It can be frustrating, but you have to be patient. You have to be very gentle with victims of this type of crime. Okay, she doesn't wanna to talk to me, that's perfectly fine. Nurse, if you can talk to her, please try to get something for me so I can continue working this case. And sexual assault is one of the most degrading crimes for the victims. A sexual assault is going to leave an emotional scar that's with that person for the rest of their life. If ever a time to put the macho man cop stereotype attitude to the side, this case, this kind of case would be the time to do that. You have to be very soft spoken. You have to be very gentle in your words to, to these victims. And I've worked several sexual assault cases since then. Most of the time we call CID out to come work, basically the continuation of that, so we can get back on the road and continue taking our calls. But I have to say, getting a conviction on a rapist is by far one of the most rewarding parts of this job, at least on a local level. But it never fails. As soon as you finally get back on the road, you're gonna have some dickhead telling you that you don't do shit all night and that you are a tyrant and you're worthless. It's just part of the job, guys. Get used to it. Don't worry about their opinions. Continue to do your job. Anyway, guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this was more of a serious topic today, but this was actually suggested when I asked you guys for ideas a couple of weeks ago, so I do appreciate it. I don't have the username in front of me of who suggested it, but either way, thank you for your ideas. I've actually got a bunch of ideas lined up now. I, the writer's block is finally at least temporarily gone. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. It is great to see you guys again. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to address them accordingly. Some good news. I actually talked to Bama last night and he is very anxious to be back on the show. And I am very anxious to have him back on the show. Anytime I think about having people on the show, Bama and Staten are like the first go-to people I think about. Staten doesn't live here anymore, so it's hard to get him to travel back and forth. Uh, but Bama does live here. Things are going good for him. And uh, I'm very excited to have him back on the show again soon. So if you guys have any ideas for collaborations with me and Bama, I've already got one in mind. I don't want to spoil the surprise. But if you guys have any ideas that we can do together, let me know in the comment section. And I am open to your ideas and opinions. Anyway, guys, thanks again. And I will see you guys very, very soon.